So which properties are best when doing rent to rent? We're going to talk about that in this video right now. Hello and welcome to the Property Unleashed YouTube channel with me, Mark Fitzgerald. It's fantastic to have you joining me here. So which properties are best when doing rent to rent? Well, it depends on your strategy. So when you're doing rent to rent, you're looking at either doing it with HMOs where you're going to get tenants in and put them on an AST or you're looking at doing holiday or corporate lets. So you can use different properties on both strategies. But fundamentally, if you're going to be renting them out and doing tenants on an AST, you want to be looking at HMOs, houses of multiple occupation. Why? These are the properties that you rent out room by room. You'll have probably heard of them before. Why do you do that? Because you get maximum profits by doing that. If you have a single let property and you wanted to do a rent to rent on it and you could only put a family in it, your profits are going to be very, very low and your liability on that property is going to be massively high. Whereas, of course, if you're renting it out by the room, so if you have five bedrooms or more, which is typically where it works best, you can do it on properties with less rooms, but you need to have a specific area to be able to do that. And if you need to know more about that information, then please feel free to reach out to me because I know how to do this and I have helped people do this with rooms of less than five. But typically, five or more rooms is where it works really, really well. Six to seven is a sweet spot really for profits and everything in most areas but that's how you would do it using HMOs. So you rent the properties out by the room and fundamentally you won't have a completely empty property. Now the caveat to that is if you're letting it to students who all come at the same time and all leave at the same time then yes you may have an empty property but you can factor that into your numbers when you stack the deals. But if you're if you're putting in there blue collar workers or professionals and you're letting it on a room by room rather than to a group of people, then you will nine times out of 10, unless everybody sort of like wants to leave at the same time, you won't have a completely empty property. So you'll always have some money coming in. You'll always have some cash flow coming in. I love HMOs. I think they're a great strategy. You can look at service accommodation and hear about the buzzword that they're brilliant and everything. But HMOs actually are an easier um, strategy to manage once you've got your systems in place and you've set it up. You've got your tenants in there. You can basically sit back. I wouldn't say relax, but you can sit back and manage the situation quite well. You don't have to be as quick and proactive. Uh, if there's a major problem, of course, you want to be as quick and proactive as possible. But if it's a holiday let and something goes wrong and somebody's only there for one night or two nights, you've got to get it sorted then and there, basically, or you're getting bad reviews and you're going to have problems. Whereas if you work with tenants and you make sure that they understand what's going on, it can work well. Of course, some people look at single lets and think, well, if I get a property, I'll offer a guaranteed rent to the landlord. I'll do the property up and then I'll put a family in there or I'll put a couple in there and I'll reap, you know, a couple of hundred pounds a month. I wouldn't do that because if you get a void, you're still paying the landlord a big chunk of money. And that, that can potentially be, you know, anything up from 500 to 1000 to 2000 pounds. Your liabilities are very, very high and you can go out of business very, very quickly if you struggle to fill that property at the end of the day. Of course, other properties that work really, really well for serviced accommodation, of course, you can use pretty much anything. You can even use HMOs. Um, you just need to make sure that it's set up right. If I was gonna do this, this with HMOs, you really wanna be using sort of contractors that are basically just gonna be going to the property, putting the head down, going to bed. Uh, if they've got to share a bathroom, they're more inclined to want to use your property if they've got their own ensuite bathroom. So each of the rooms has their own ensuite. Some people and, and contractors won't care. Some will. So I always try and look at the fact that you want to have their own bathrooms. If you can give them their own bathrooms, give them their own sort of microwave and cooking facilities that are safe and up to standards in your area. Make sure that's very, very important that you do that up to fire regulations and everything. Uh, you can you can do it with HMOs. Fundamentally, what you'll see a lot on Airbnb is uh, one bed houses, two bed houses, flats, one bed flats, two bed flats, studio apartments. You'll see the cottages uh, where people can go on nice walks and you can really do rent to rent on any property there. 
But I would just say that if you are going to take a property and make it into a holiday let, you need to let the landlord know that you're doing this. Likewise, if you're going to take a property that's normally for a family and you're going to convert it into an HMO, you still need to let the landlord know. At the end of the day, it is their property and we don't want to do anything that jeopardizes their mortgage terms or anything that they don't really know about. We need to be transparent in what we're doing so that we set ourselves up for success and we set ourselves up in the right manner. So if you're doing holiday lets, you're probably going to put some nice furniture in there. You're going to make sure it's furnished. You're going to make sure that it's in top whack, you know, full beddings, full everything so that anybody can go there, can stay there very much so like a hotel. An HMO, yes, you're going to have furniture in there, uh, but you're not necessarily going to have bedding. People will tend to bring their own bedding. Uh, cups and saucers and all of those plates and everything that you'll have and cutlery in the kitchen you'll tend to have in there but again people do tend to bring their own as well uh, and potentially what you can do in all of these situations is just get very small fridges that are quite quiet have them in the rooms so that people have their own places to put their put their food put their stuff that they might want to have overnight and things so there's a lot of different um, properties you can look at if you've got the cash and you're doing serviced accommodation just be mindful of the fact that if you are taking a single let you probably will pay a little bit more than you would for the single let by doing serviced accommodation because obviously a landlord or whoever owns the property might want a, a cut of that you know so a higher rent to get the deal over the line and also while you're building up bookings while you're actually getting people coming through just be mindful of the fact that you might need a good few months rent that you can pay out whilst you're getting your bookings in before you start making lots of money. HMOs tend to be a, a bit quicker. Uh, in my opinion, if they're, they're a lot quicker. You know, if you, even if you take a property that's empty within the first month, as long as you set yourself up and do the right things, that you uh, market the property properly, dress it, make it look good, you can probably fill it within a month and uh, your cash flowing from then so you haven't got to worry about having a big stockpile of money to be able to cover yourself while you're getting the bookings coming in while you're getting reviews building up and everything like that i always say start with one strategy so for me i started with hmos but now i have a bit of a mixture so i still have hmos but i also have some serviced accommodation as well why not you know why not mix and match it a bit because i can because i have the systems in place to be able to do so I would say do the same, but I would make sure that you focus on one strategy first. So if it's cash flow that you're looking for, quick cash flow, maybe to get you out of your job, maybe to give you a bit more time freedom. Potentially, you could look at getting hold of a few HMOs to cover your costs, to cover your wages, to cover your business as well. Uh, and then you can do whatever you like. So not only, you know, can you do service accommodation, HMOs, obviously, if you're making good money as well, you can start building your own portfolio. You can start building your own legacy, which is what I'm doing now for my family and for my kids. I hope this episode's helped you or this video's helped you, should I say. And uh, I'm always offering free tools and resources. So if you visit uh, www.thepropertyunleashed.com, you'll see a deal analyzing spreadsheet to help you stack any of those rent to rent deals. You will also see a 10 step rent to rent business builder guide that you can download all free to you. There's also the podcast where you can catch up on a lot of mindset trips and rent to rent and property and everything like that. I'm Mark Fitzgerald. I won Mastermind 27, which was a Simon Zucci program with uh, 60 other property investors in. And I'm super proud of the fact that I did that using the rent to rent strategy. I've also featured in YPN magazine, just so you know a little bit about me. And it took me 12 months basically to double my wage. Well, it took me eight months actually to, to double my corporate wage. It took me four months to get my first deal. It took me another four months to get eight deals and that doubled my corporate wage. And I haven't looked back ever since. So I hope this video has helped you and inspired you. You can get out there. You can do this. Anybody can. Just make sure you take the right channels. I also have the Rent to Rent Business Builder program where I can help you on your journey, push you in the right direction and make sure that you're getting the results and you're finding deals that are good deals that are going to cash flow well and that are going to make sure that you're not giving yourself a headache you set yourself up for success which is what I do with my students and we push you forward but anyway if nothing else keep watching these videos like it subscribe to it share it with anybody you think will enjoy it and I'll be back with you in the next video you'll take care and bye for now